the one example with Puggy is the funniest. The funniest, you know what that example, the, uh, the Puggy roasted that. it, it's funny hand. Uh, like I said, I yak, yak, yaked all the time, drove people crazy. And I mean, the cocaine helped, you know. <laughs> I mean, it made, but I was pretty talkative before that, and as you can see, I'm pretty talkative after. <laughs> Maybe there's hangover effects, I don't know. But uh, this one hand was against Puggy Pearson. This is another rule that was changed in Las Vegas because of me and Puggy Pearson. It was mainly Puggy Pearson. He was known for like, at the end of a pot, the rule in Las Vegas was, big pot out there, say you bet, or say I bet, say say you bet, and I'm Puggy. I say, I call. He's got his hands on his cards, and you turn your hand over, aces up or something. And he said, that's good. He takes his chest back, so I said, well, you can't do that. No, he's, what are you talking about? The rule is, I got to take my hand off it before it counts. And man, he did it to me three different times, mm-hmm. cheating me out of like, for five hundred dollar bets, I said, "Puggy, I'm going to pay you back one of these days." Mark my words. And he laughed and said, "You sucker, you talk all that talk, but I keep stealing here and I steal your ante when you're looking away." I let, he stole my ante for six months. Five dollar ante, thirty sixty. He told me squealed on said he stole it for six months. I said, "How'd he do?" <laughs> he, he went broke. <laughs> anyway, uh, so what I did this one day, this was a three and six hundred game at the Dunes. Chip was running the place, and Chip was staking me because I'd already been to five clinics that Chip set, sent me to to get over the drugs. Crack cocaine's a tough thing to beat, uh, especially when you're doing it in your own strength without, without the Lord's help. In fact, it can, I don't think it can be beat if you don't get God's help. But I, I, I went there with the motive of acting like I was Claire, <laughs> so Chip would give me money to play on so I could go party again. Well, this is one of the time Chip was out of town, he hired Doug Dalton, to watch me, because Doug Dalton ran the poker room. He wanted him to go to the bathroom with me, make sure he didn't do cocaine. So I'd already taken care of the uh, the gentleman in the bathroom that took care of the lotion and stuff. I said, put the cocaine on the bottom, or I can sniff it. And I tipped him good money to do it. And every time Doug would be standing there, I said, Doug, I'm not even using the stall. What are you watching me for? He just, I'm just supposed to watch you. Do my face. <laughs> Put it back down. And everybody goes, says, now's it all right? <laughs> he said, you seem like you're high. I said, of course I'm high. This smell this stuff. You don't make anybody high. You know, lotion, mint, you know, the stuff in the men's room. Went back out. This this hand came up. This buggy. Where uh, he had, well, he made three hidden jacks on the turn. And I didn't know he made three jacks, but I made three diamonds on Fifth Street showing. Uh, I made the uh, five... Six, seven of diamonds showing. Puggy's got three in jack. We put in 14 raises. Puggy says, son, you know who you're playing against? This is Pug Pearson. You can talk all these other people out there and bluff them. You ain't going to do that with me. I can guarantee you're not going to win this spot unless you got the best hand. I don't think you got a flush. So well, then call. <coughs> he called. Sixth Street. <coughs> Nobody caught nothing. He actually bet out again. <coughs> he had an ace up to it. I raised it again. He says, okay, I call. You're getting paid off or you're getting raised to the river. Just that simple. He showed me the three jacks. So I'm watching him because I know his moves. I'm watching him at the river, making sure that he, I know he's going to be concentrating and trying to fill up because he thinks he's beat. And, my, and I, so I decided I had the eight of diamonds in the hole. I did have it open in straight flush draw, but I had no pair. I'd like it off ace. So I, the last card comes out. There's my, my river card. He takes his, and I real quickly put, put the eight of diamonds out there. I put this underneath. He said, I don't need to look, Pug. He says, you can check, raise me. I'm betting. He checked, I bet. And he says, I started cussing the dealer like he always does. And I know the move he's going to make. I said, Pug, you threw away all this money for crying out loud. You know you got to fill up. I had to flush. I tried to tell you what I had. Pug, he says, you're a lying son of a gun. He said, I told you you're not going to bluff this pot. He says, I call. And there's his hand. And, and immediately, I, I, I turned my eyes. He says, Puggy, you were right. I was bluffing, but I made the straight flush at the river. Showed him the eight of diamonds at five, six, seven showing. Oh, everybody started laughing. I didn't show my card yet. But Puggy says, wait a minute, big mouth. Here's 600 you're not going to win. I said, what do you mean? He says, don't you know the rule in Vegas by now, baby? How many times I've done it to you? I got my hand on the card. I said, no way you're getting away with this. I had no way that I had to be Doug Dalton make the rule because somebody else made a mistake. So I said, we're calling Doug Dalton on this one. Puggy's calling anybody you want. My hand's here. The dealer saw it. Doug comes over and says, he's, he's managing Chip's money. You know, it's Chip's money I'm playing with. And I knew he was going to make the, he has to make the right call because he runs the room. So they told the story. And Doug says, 
I don't know why this keeps happening. Dealer, what happened? Well, I hate to admit it, but Puggy's telling the truth. He, he kept his hands on the cards, and Danny turned his hand up too early and called his hand out. I didn't show it. I, I just turned it in. I'm in straight flush. I'm laughing at him. And Puggy says, this is one 600, baby. that your big mouth cost you. I know you won this big pot because you're a lucky son of a gun. I called you, and it was right, knowing you were bluffing, knowing you didn't have it. But old Puggy, you got to go a long way to get on over Puggy. I still stole 600 from you. I'm waiting, waiting. And I said, Puggy, mark my words. I will pay you back for this. And take the 600 back to you. you want today, buddy. So his hand away, and I turned my whole hand up. I said, you were right, Puggy. I was bluffing. Oh, my gosh. The whole room blew up laughing. Puggy jumped up, chased me around. He's a big guy. I was scared. He's running around, just throwing things at me, trying to catch me. I'm going to beat your brains out. Finally, Doug Dalton got a security guard down and stopped it. And they said, Danny didn't do nothing. All he did was show up rough, and this guy's chasing me around like a man. So he barred Puggy. <laughs> I started it out for life. <laughs> Danny, tell us uh, a little bit about some of the, the legends you played against in Vegas uh, playing stud. Let's, let's talk a little bit about Stewie, for example. How many times did you play Stewie in stud where it got down to you and him late at night? Stewie Unger. Stud's not uh, – he was great stud player, don't get me wrong, when he wasn't doing coke and stuff like that. But 